Hey, what's up everybody? Chicago Gooner here, bringing you another Arsenal talk. Uh, I wanted to get this Arsenal talk out yesterday, but, uh, you know, I, I had stuff to do, but at the same time, I was just, like, ex supremely just, like, pissed off um, after yesterday's game. Um, <laughs> you know, I, just, I, did, I don't even know where to, where to begin. Um, you know, we started off strong. We started off with a lot of possession. Uh, took some shots on target, uh, which was which was kind of surprising. You know, we're uh, unfortunately one of the uh, faults of Arsenal um, is we're always trying to look for that perfect goal every single time instead of trying to challenge uh, goalkeepers. Um, even if you just put it on target, even if you you know strike it right at him, you know you're still challenging him. You're still uh, you know, giving him something to think about that um, if if a player is 18 yards, 20 yards, 25 yards out, um, that you always have to be um, at attention uh, and be aware of uh, a possible shot uh, coming at you. And, you know, it was kind of surprising seeing, like, Aaron Ramsey and then Sanchez and um, – I think Ozil took a couple shots that were off target, but, um, you know, it's kind of surprising to see us trying to put shots on target even early in the game uh, without that perfect uh, passing sequence uh, that we're always accustomed to at Arsenal. Um, so it was kind of nice to see, but then, of course, they just hit us on the counter. Uh, everybody fell asleep, uh, especially Flamini on that first goal uh, that uh, Aguero got. Um, you know, he even looked and saw where Aguero was, and of course, Aguero just, you know, turned on the Jets and, and just, you know, flew right past him, and, you know, a perfect pass from uh, from Navas, uh, and, you know, Chesney couldn't do anything about it, really, uh, tried to make a save on it, but it was just, you know, perfect placement, perfect uh, shot, and, again, caught us on the counter, and, you know, one of my first tweets afterwards was, okay, yeah, we don't need a CDM, right? Um, because everybody was out of position almost. No one was really organized um, except for, uh, you know, Koscioni and, and Mertesacker. Um, everybody else was up, you know, upfield. Um, you know, it was just it was, it was was just annoying to see that uh, there, were, there was no cover at all. And then Flamini, of course, just fell asleep completely. Uh, again, 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 you know, he had his eye on him and he knew exactly where he was and all of a sudden... Pfft, you know, he turns on the Jets, and, you know, I don't know why Flamini stopped like he did and, and didn't run, uh, didn't keep on running towards goal, knowing that uh, the cross was going to come uh, right in front of goal. Um, you know, Navas had no other options than to uh, really put it to where he did put it, exactly where he put it. And, you know, it was just really uh, fucking annoying uh, to see that. You know, it, it was it was like... Uh, um, you know, it was almost like flashbacks of last year when we played uh, Man City at their place where they just killed us on the counter all all freaking day. And, again, it was just like, you know, it was head-scratching. And, you know, even after the game, you know, they were saying, you know, especially even like the critics or, you know, the analysts, if, you know, if we did uh, spend some money on some defenders other than Colm Chambers, uh, we'd be in a lot better position of course, Debussy as well, but, you know, we needed another uh, center half. We needed another, uh, we needed a world-class uh, uh, CDM, and, of course, we didn't get it. And uh, now Debussy's hurt, unfortunately. He's going to be out for, they say, up to two months. Um, I'm banking on it's probably going to be, you know, anywhere from two and a half to three months, uh, knowing the uh, Arsenal medical staff of how they can't get p players back on time. Um uh, so that's a that's a huge blow, that's a huge blow that we that we're gonna be losing Debushi for that long. Um, of course, Colin Chambers is the backup, but what if he gets hurt? What if Koscioni gets hurt? What if Murdasacker gets hurt? Who the fuck are our our co cover guys? No one. The only one that has proper cover right now is Monreal and Gibbs, because Gibbs is finally back from injury. But who else? <laughs> You know, are we really going to depend on Monreal to be our backup center half? Um, we're going to have to call up, you know, some of the U squad. Um, I think Isaac Hayden is is probably the, like the only one that's closest to even uh, contemplating of if getting him into like the first team. Uh, of course, uh, Hector Bellerin 
will have to probably be called up as well because we just don't have any cover and unfortunately now just like last year we're gonna we're gonna drag people into the ground we're gonna run them into the ground and that's what Arsene Wenger is exactly gonna do because we don't have any fucking cover and this is all on him this is all on him this is all on Ivan Gazidis and Dick Law uh, for them not to be able to get um, things done in the transfer window like there should have been and it's just really it's it's depressing it really is it's 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 depressing and embarrassing at the same time uh that uh they couldn't see where our weaknesses are and we couldn't go out there and and of course we had the money of course we had the money to go out there and and buy uh William Calvahol like we should have uh, regardless of the price tag you know if they wanted 30 million throw it at him because you know what he could have been covered for our dm spot he could have been basically our our starting dm and he could have covered for uh the center half as well uh which which would have gave Colin Chambers um <clears throat> you know you know now he's going to be playing as right back uh which is in his obviously he played it for Southampton last year but um you know obviously his 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 stronger position is going to be center half uh you know into the future uh, so it's just it's just really depressing uh, that again now we're down to five defenders total. Um, I know Flamini can play left back, but um, <laughs> you know it, it it it's something if you're a big club that you shouldn't have to worry about. Um, you're looking at like a Man City or a Chelsea. Um, they have plenty of cover for those positions, plenty of it, and we just don't. So now we're gonna have to ask uh, some of these younger guys to step up their game and. Um, and be a part of the first team and, and throw them into the fire. A lot of people are saying, well, why why can't we call recall uh, you know Jenkinson from loan? He's fucking hurt right now, too. He can't even play for West Ham right now because he's injured. Um, so we can't even bother recalling him. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's, 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 a, it's a head scratcher. Um, going on to, like, the game, more of the game, of course, you know, Everybody was hoping, you know, if you if you were on Twitter before the game, uh, you know, even days before the game, you know, everybody was hoping for that four two three one to show up again, uh, to see Mesut Ozil in that number ten spot. Nope, starting the game, he's over on the left side again, just hanging out, you know, by the touchline, and you know, right as the game started, I was just like, you know what, we'll be lucky if we get a draw out of this, and of course, that's exactly what what happened we should have won the game but you know we fell asleep again on a set piece um and it's just it just boggles my mind of how um how this can happen um you know throughout the game i mean the best players on the pitch for arsenal were uh jack wilshire and alexi sanchez i mean those two uh their, their work rate through the entire game and and how they uh you know how they played and and how hard they worked throughout the game uh, to attack and to defend and and everything. I mean they were perfect. I mean Jack Wilshire was the man of the match for myself. Uh, you know a goal and assist. I mean he was just all over the place. And um, but at the same time in that formation, uh, like I said in one of my last episodes, that uh, sometimes Jack and Aaron uh, Ramsey they get into each other's way sometimes. Uh, you saw that a few times, you know, yesterday during the Man City game. But uh, the one thing I gotta really say is, you know, Jack really took that game over. He was, he just said, "Fuck it, I'm, I'm just gonna do what I have to do." And you know, he, he was attacking. He was making passes into the box. Uh, you know, he played, he played pretty much almost like a perfect game. Uh, there was a few times where he could have got back and uh, really helped defend, but he. You know, he was kind of lazy, but, you know, who knows, maybe, you know, he was trying to take a breather or two because he was just, he was just all over the place. Him and, him and Sanchez, you know, they were uh, by far the two best players on the pitch for either side. Um, you know, they pretty much own that game. Um, but again, Mesut Ozil on the left side, you're wasting him. Uh, he should be on, the, he should be on, you know, he should be right in the middle, right behind the striker, uh, playing as that playmaker, playing as uh, that number 10, and it's just not happening. And it's just, you know, it's, I don't know how much more I could say about it because it just pisses me off to no end. Uh, of course, everybody was on Mesut Ozil's back, and rightfully so. I mean, he looked lazy out there sometimes, um, you know, tracking back and stuff. But, I mean, that's 
this is that's not his game. That was never his game. Um, when you're playing as a number ten, when you're playing as a playmaker, uh, when you're playing into that this type of system, um, he shouldn't have to track back. Um, and of course, he's used to that, and he's used to that type of uh, system. And now you're trying to push him into that left side and asking him to uh, help out defensively and all that type of crap, and it's just not going to happen. Uh, you might see it here and there, but again, you know that's not his job to do that. It shouldn't have to be his job. Uh, especially even when you play in that fucking formation, when you're playing basically seven behind the ball with, you know, the back four and then with uh, Aaron Ramsey, Jack Wilshire, and then Flamini. Um, I mean, it just it just boggles my fucking mind of how you can waste uh, one of the best number tens in the world like that. Um, I saw a quote today. Um, <laughs> I don't. I mean, I don't even know if it's if it's real or it's fake or if it's uh, people making shit up. Um, but I saw it on Twitter that uh, Mesut Ozil said that everybody knows that I'm my best position is that playmaker and my b- best position is at number ten. Now, if he didn't really say that, thank God, thank God, he finally's you know that he's finally gonna come out and say, you know, this is the position I want to play. This is the position that. I was brought here to play, and rightfully so. This is this is the position that we that we brought him here to play, not on the fucking wing. And then there is another quote saying that uh, once Theo, this is supposedly by Arsene Wenger, once Theo comes back, then Mesut Ozil will be positioned back into his natural position. That's probably one of the dumbest things I've ever heard, I've ever heard in my life. You know, going on to Arsene Wenger a little bit here, and I'll go back into Mesut Ozil and in our formations and everything like that, but, you know, I've never been one of those guys to say Arsene Wenger out or Wenger out, uh, like on Twitter or anything. But the old man has lost it. I mean, he has completely fucking lost it. And, you know, I'm like a fucking broken record here on all my Arsenal talks here and, and talking about this formation and how, how bullshit is it, it is. I mean, he's just completely fucking lost it because we have, if, if that quote is real, that once Theo comes back, then he'll be put back into his natural position. That makes zero sense to me. One, because we have wieners sitting on the fucking bench. We have Lucas Podolski, Oxley chamberlain Joel Campbell. You can even throw Santi out there if you want to throw him out, out as a winner. So we have like four winners sitting on the fucking bench. Just sitting there. Watching the game. Possibly coming in as subs. But yet we're wasting Mesut Ozil on the wins. But we have to wait until Theo comes back to harbor the storm and, and do all this other bullshit? It's bullshit. That's what it exactly it is. The old man has lost his fucking mind. I mean, it's fucking... I mean, I can't I can't even contemplate of what's even going on here. With Arsene Wenger and why he thinks this works. Because it doesn't. You know, we're, we're wasting Mesut Ozil on the wings. We brought him here to be the number 10, and we have Wiener sitting on the fucking bench. And I'll even take you back to last year. Oxley chamberlain got hurt first. Lucas Podolski got hurt, got hurt second. And then Theo got hurt during the Marseille game. He was the last one to get hurt of our winners, of our true winners that we had on, had on the team last year. Theo was the first one to come back, and he didn't come back until November. And he wasn't really, he was put into the side as like, as like a sub. His first real start was against Man City last year when we played him up at their place in November, late November. So there was about a, a two and a half month period there where we didn't play with any winners, and Mesut Ozil was still the number 10. And he still played as the number 10. And we still played the 4 2 3 1. So using the, ex- ex- the excuse of, well, when Theo comes back, then he'll be put back in number 10. It doesn't make any sense. Because if we don't reach top four this year, because we're not going to win the league. I mean, that, that Chelsea thing, it, it, 
you know, that Chelsea, it's over. I'm sorry, but it's over. The fucking league is done. If Chelsea stays healthy, it's done. Because that Chelsea thing is not going to be stopped. Because that's just too fucking good right now with Diego Costa up top and, and Cesc Fabregas uh, as a playmaker. That, yeah, that thing is, I mean, plus you have Hazard on the side and then, you know, you have a ton of winners and everything like that. I mean, it's just, huh, that Chelsea thing is ridiculous. So you can get it out of your head that we're going to win the league because we have no chance because, you know, especially we, we're dropping points here left and right. You know, people are are saying, oh, a draw is good. No, no. When you play at home, you want all three points, even against the good teams, even against the top four teams, top five teams. You want to draw when you're when you're away at home or when you're away from home. That's when you want to draw. And people were just happy about a draw. Well, I'm satisfied with a draw. No. You should never be satisfied with a draw, especially when you're Arsenal. Especially when you play at the Emirates. It makes me sick that you, you see fans like this. Is this what is this what we are now? Or, or did we become Everton under David Moyes where that's all they basically did. They, you know, they beat the bottom half teams and they they draw it against everybody else, and they finish, you know, sixth, seventh in the table. Is that who we become now? All of a sudden, is is this what we're happy with? Leicester City, we should have won that game. This Man City game, we should have won the game, but we fell asleep on the set piece. Which, <laughs> you know, if you, if you saw that set piece, I mean, people were just standing there. I mean, Koscielny moved, but then no one moved. No one else moved towards the ball. You know, Chambers kind of fell asleep there too. He never went after the ball either. And then Chesney couldn't uh, make a save for us at all. He tried to, but you know, just didn't happen for him. And it just, it just, you know. It, if that's what we've become, oh my god, you know, fuck us then. And everybody's saying, well, we're, our Invincibles year is, and, you know, get that shit out of your head, okay? We're not the Invincibles. We don't have that type of talent at every single position like we did back then. You know, Danny, you know, Walcott's not fucking Terry Henry. You know, so it's, it's just, it just pisses me off to no end that we keep on running this. You know, if, you know, I'll get into a little bit of the, like, uh, Champions League preview here uh, in a little bit. But, you know, we're kind of lucky. Well, I'll get into that. But, I mean, we keep on running this shit. It, it's just, it's just going to keep, you know, what, <laughs> I'm kind of just all over the place here. I'm sorry. But, you know, this is how pissed off I am about this. You know, what is something that we haven't done yet in this season? And we've played two more games more than anybody else so far, I think. We haven't scored more than two goals in a game yet. And again, yesterday, only two goals. We should have had three, but, you know, Walcott's chip. God, that was almost there. And to go on um, on uh, Welbeck, I mean, I'm sorry, Danny, Danny Welbeck. Uh, his chip yesterday was almost there, and he played pretty good. I thought he played pretty well. Uh, not sure, not too understanding about the cramps at the end of the game. I don't know if that's because of the of him playing in the international break. I don't know if he was just uh, there's there was probably a lot of nerves going uh, with Welbeck yesterday. Um, you know, every uh, professional player kind of does that. You know, he's coming to a new team. He he wants to impress everybody. He wants to get off to a good start. Um, so it's it's a very good possibility that you know he was just really nervous and uh, he just didn't get enough fluids uh, in the body you know for him to last the entire game. And of course he did have the uh, international break and he did play the entire match um, against Sweden or not against Sweden against Switzerland. Um, But I thought overall he played pretty well. You know, he tried to uh, go after headers. He tried to hold the ball up as much as he could. Uh, you know, he he played defensively. You know, he, he did a lot of things that uh, Drew normally does, but he did it with a lot of pace. 
Uh, there was a lot of times where his pace really came uh, in handy, and and he really did a lot, you know, with his pace. And uh, you could see the skill. You could see that uh, it's going to come. You know, eventually, once we go back to that, you know, four-two-three-one. Once we go back to that uh, type of formation, if we fucking do. Um, you know, it's just going to be kind of sky's the limit for him because it's just going to open up uh, a lot more lanes for him. You know, he's going to have uh, those passing lanes to, uh, you know, those through balls from Ozil or Ramsey or even uh, Sanchez. You know, those things are going to start getting through. And it's just going to it's going to be fun to watch if we ever go back to that to that formation. Uh, so high hopes for uh, Danny Welbeck uh, in his future. And I think you know he, I think he played well uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, of course, it was a shame that his his chip went off the crossbar or went off the post. Uh, but again, you know, that's the that's the type of player that we're going to need. That's not going to be afraid to um, take a shot like that. Uh, and of course, he had another one that was a bender that uh, man was just like inches away uh, from even hitting the crossbar. I mean, it was closer than people thought. Um, <laughs> that was right after he went down for uh, his cramps. And he was able to get back up and get back into the game and, 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 and try to make a shot and almost did and almost won us the game. But, um, again, we should have won that game yesterday. Um, coming out of the second half, we played, you know, even better than the first half. We really attacked as much as we could. And, you know, Jack Wilshere's goal, again, just, you know, that, just let that little dink chip right over uh, Hart. And then, of course, that volley was, that volley from Sanchez was just, oh, my God. Um I mean, he had his eye on the ball the whole time. I mean, that's a goal scorer. I mean, if you want to know what a goal scorer looks like, that is a goal scorer because he didn't take it. You know, he didn't he didn't take his eye off the ball. He didn't look at the goal. He didn't look at where Hart was. Uh, he didn't look at where any of the defenders were. He knew he was going to take that shot immediately. Once it was coming right at him, he saw it. He was keeping his eye on the ball, and it was perfect, perfect volley. I mean, one of the goals of the season so far from you know any game. I mean, you can even put that Jack Wilshire goal up there in the top ten as well, uh, just because of the passing sequence and you know that little that little move he made on Clichy yesterday was just beautiful, uh, just really faked out uh, Clichy, uh, and you know he he basically left his jock hanging on the hanging on the floor, and you know again that chip over Hart, you know that was one of Jack Wilshire's probably best games, um, you know the last game that he probably had that. Uh, that you could say he was just like really at his best, and he was just he was just all over the place. Was uh, I believe it was against Marseille last year in the Champions League um, at the Emirates, where you know he just played that perfect game, and I hope he can just keep going on with that. I hope he can play at that level and keep playing at that level, uh, because if we can depend on him to do that, I mean, sky's the limit. I mean, we're gonna be uh, embarrassed with riches at that CM spot with Ramsey, with uh, Jack Wilshire, uh, w you know, with all the guys that we have that to uh, be able to boss that midfield, and that's something that we really haven't done yet, too. And it's because of the formation, um, you know, like last year, Mesut Ozil and, and Aaron Ramsey. Even when Ramsey was out, he, you know, you could see uh, Jack and and you know, you know, you could see Jack kind of starting to, to adapt uh, last year to Mesut Ozil's uh, playing style and you know what he wanted out of him. <clears throat> So hopefully he can continue on with this, and you know hopefully you know because he's playing he's playing better right now than you know Aaron Ramsey started off hot uh, in the beginning of the season. You know of course we're only about like three or four weeks into the season anyway, but you know Aaron Ramsey started off hot uh, in the beginning of the season. Now kind of like Jack has taken over because um, you could see you know the knock that uh, Aaron Ramsey took uh, when he played the Wales game. Uh, he had a little knock at the end of the game for his ankle, uh, which was like a rash challenge, and you could see it. You know, it it affected him a little bit late yesterday. You could see him, uh, you know, favoring in it, favoring that foot, uh, favoring that ankle when he was uh, running a lot yesterday. So hopefully he gets a uh, somewhat of a rest, um, and hopefully he can get back to his best. But Jack Wilshere is playing better than him right now, but. You know that's a great problem problem to have that we can rotate those guys in and out uh, if need be, especially if we go back to that four two three one. But uh, hopefully Arsene Wenger gets the set out of his ass. And you know again we have winners on the bench 
to come in and play those play positions. If you don't have any confidence in them, why are they in the team? Why are they even in uh, the you know why are they even on the bench? You know, if you don't have any confidence in them that they can play that position or they can play against a Man City or even a Leicester City for Christ's sake. You know, why are they even in, you know, why are they even wearing uh, an Arsenal shirt if you have zero confidence in them? Because that's what, that's what it, that's what it tells me. So the old man has fucking lost it and he, he needs to get his head out of his ass completely. But to go on to the a little bit of a Champions League um, preview here, um, Arsenal is kind of lucky right now. They played Dortmund on Tuesday. But there was a tweet right after the game against Man City on Saturday. And, you know, I don't... I hate to see players injured. Uh, even even from um, opposing teams, you know, you always... You know, I want to see Arsenal play against the best players, against the best teams, and and beat those teams... Uh, so, you know, fans don't have excuses. Well, this player was out, that player was out, this player was out. But right now, we need as much luck as possible because we're playing like shit. You know, it's great to be unbeaten right now in the league, but at the same time, we're dropping points. You know, we dropped points against Leicester City, we dropped points against Man City, um, and we're sitting seventh in the table right now. We should be at almost first, you know, we should be right behind Chelsea and chasing after him right now. But, you know, the more we lose points, the more, you know, we're going to be in the rear view mirror and we're going to be up against it. But the Champions League, it's, you know, we got kind of lucky here. Um, there was a tweet by a uh, Bricia Dortmund. Uh, I don't know if she's a, like a reporter. She's, uh, she's, you know, she's pretty uh, well known on Twitter. Uh, Sandra Goldschmidt and her tweet said that Rufus or uh, Marco Royce Rufus uh, Marco Royce Gundogan Hummels uh, Kuba uh, Kirch if that's how you pronounce it are all out for the game They're, they won't be available for Tuesday's match against uh, Arsenal at Dortmund which is you know again we're pretty lucky that <laughs> you know, all these guys are out because if all those guys were healthy and 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 playing, you know, I I we'd probably get embarrassed on Tuesday because of the formation we're playing, because of you know just playing player players out of position like Mesut Ozil, playing them on the left side, playing them on the wings, it's just ridiculous. But again, Royce, the the big names, you know, uh, Royce, Gunnigan, and and Hummels all out on Tuesday for Dorman. And that's good news for us. You know, that's Moko Royce, one of their leading scorers, uh, one of the best players in the world. Uh, Gunnigan, you know, he's been hampered with uh, back injuries um, over the last, uh, over a year now. But, uh, you know, when he, that dude's healthy, I mean, he's one of the best, you know, uh, midfielders in the game as well. And, of course, Matt Hummel is one of the best uh, center halves in the world, in my opinion. You know, all out for the game. That's huge for us. That's huge that, uh, you know, those guys are out because we need all the help we can get right now. And plus, if we can go to Dortmund and get three points out of that game. You know, I know we did it last year, but we had to do it in a, uh, you know, we basically parked the bus and, and tr we tried to hit them on the counter last year um, when we played them at Dortmund. We might not have to do that this year because, again, you know, no Lewandowski either. We don't have to worry about that guy up top. So this game, we should be able to get three points out of this game, no matter what. And that'll be huge to start off uh, the group stage. Because if we can get three points at Dortmund, you know, I mean, that should set, that should set the stage for the group stage for us to win it. Because we, we there is no reason why we shouldn't win it, uh, at least the group stage this year. So we can get another better favorable draw uh, when it comes to the knockout stage. But again, all those guys are out. Uh, will not be available for uh, the Arsenal on Tuesday, which is you know it's it's just fucking great news uh, to see that. 
uh, because again, like I said, we need all the fucking help we can get right now because, um, you know, if we're waiting for players to come back like a Theo Walcott just so he can, just so Mesut Ozil can play the, the, the uh, playmaking position again, it's just, it's just fucking ridiculous. Um, but that's all I got for you right now. Um, I will uh, put something together, hopefully, um, maybe after the Champions League game and talk about that, and, or maybe even this uh, past, this next weekend. Um, you know, I'll probably do that because, um, you know, I'd probably talk about two games instead of just one because I don't know if I'll have the time. But uh, uh, we got Aston Villa away. <laughs> that's That's Saturday after this Dortmund game and we better watch out for Aston Villa we better take them seriously because they went to Anfield and beat them 1-0 so uh, yeah we better take them seriously unlike we did last year in our opening game um, and then we have uh, Southampton in the Capital One Cup and hopefully we don't play any for the first teamers in that game well we're going to have to we're going to be forced to because we don't have any uh, you know depth in our defense so but you know again that's another uh that's another arsenal talk that i can get all into that again but uh you know hopefully in january for sure that uh we <laughs> you know we go out there and we get at least another center half and a right back uh because we're going to need it we're going to need that cover going into the second half of the season but uh again that'll be it for right now uh leave your comments if you have any comments if you want to vent a little bit uh kind of like in my last uh, video if you need to vent if you need to get something off your chest go ahead and do it um, because we all kind of need to vent a little bit uh, especially after how we started this season but uh, that'll be it later